Hey YouTube, it's Cash. So I've got something really cool to share with you during this series. Uh, this is the first uh, episode. I don't really know how many uh, episodes in this series that I'm going to do because uh, this is really exciting to me and there's really a lot of directions that I could go in. Uh, so without further ado, um, this is the Ithaco uh, Optical Chopper. Um, it's this particular one is the 383A. Um, the uh, unit that controls the speed is the 383B. Uh, this checks a lot of boxes for me because uh, not only is it like test equipment related, but it's mechanical. And if you've seen my previous episodes, uh, you know, I get a lot into like mechanical sampling and that sort of thing. And so this, because I have a lot of ideas of what I could do with this. So what is this? This is basically has like two, two lasers. You can kind of see in there. And there's a sensor in this side. And then this simply just chops the, the laser and creates a signal. I really, I originally thought this would be kind of like almost like a, like a square wave, but it ends up, it's more like the strumming of a guitar when there's two outputs for each sensor. This really does most of the, most of the work here, but uh, this is the um, speed control. It's very simple. It's just one dial, but it's a very fine adjustment. Um, it's just on and off switch. And uh, it's relatively quiet uh, too. I mean, it does make some, a little bit of noise once it gets kind of fast. But for the most part, um, when it's, especially when it's slow, I mean, it's almost like makes no noise at all. I can also control it by do it by hand and get some interesting results that way. This kind of goes back to uh, an episode that Heimbach did on uh, uh, lock-in amplifiers. And he was showing an Ithaco uh, lock-in amplifier. And I, I found that interesting for a couple of different reasons. I mean, not only the, for what the lock-in amplifiers do, but also because of the company, which is Ithaco, which is based in Ithaca, New York, which is actually just a little over an hour away from me. So I kind of got a little bit obsessed and kind of just found out like other things that they made and that sort of thing. And then this kind of came into my radar. Eventually, I, I found two of them for, you know, it was fairly inexpensive, but the blades are very different. The other one's a little bit more interesting. I'm excited to show that to you in a later episode. Once I realized that this actually wasn't like, you know, for clocking purposes, you know, that sort of thing, um, I started to do a little more research and then I realized that this was actually made to be used with lock-in amplifiers, ironically enough, which makes sense since they're both made by the same company. Um, and uh, and also makes sense because locking amplifiers are able to like pick out a, a signal amongst noise, which is important probably to get a, an accurate reading out of one of these things. Uh, and I did some more research and I found out that and I and I I knew about this actually, but I just didn't when I looked at this I didn't see it really when it, you know it's just one of those things that you don't really you know you don't it's not like you're not at the forefront of your mind and you kind of like kind of kind of goes over your head a little bit and then you then all of a sudden you realize like then you you remember hearing something. And then it comes back to you and you realize like, oh, yes, of course, it's, it's exactly what that is, which is uh, there's an experiment uh, by um, a scientist and the name is uh, Fizeau, and he actually used something very similar to this to discover or calculate the speed of light, which is, makes it even so that much more fascinating for me. And they still use these now, which is just remarkable. Um, I, I, I looked them up and you can buy, you can actually find blades for this. Um, they don't, this company doesn't make these anymore. The company doesn't make anything anymore. But uh, you can buy uh, a new one of these for like, they cost like, they're like over $1,000. It's crazy. Um, I think they do a lot more than this one does, of course. But uh, but it's just interesting to me that we're still using these for a physical experiment even now. It's just it's just fascinating. So I did the research to kind of figure out like what is going on with this. How did they use, what did they do with this thing? And I found in a manual uh, this diagram. Uh, it doesn't give me a whole lot of information though. Diagram kind of, kind of gives you a loose idea of what to do, but 
I did, like I like this whole bit right here. No information. The, the experiment itself. Like I don't know what this light source is. I don't know what this detector is. Like I couldn't find any of that. Um, the only thing I could see is that this you know this here's the chopper and here's my control. It's going into this reference input on the lock-in amplifier. But I I thought about it and I thought well the experiment can be anything. Um, the this this detector could be anything. You know so. It's, so that's irrelevant. That's the that's this is the control. This is the experiment. So I said, well, I'll just use my optical theremin or optical synthesizer, if you want to call it that. You've seen that in probably previous episodes too, and that'll be the experiment. And um, and I hooked it up, and it made some really interesting results. I was uh, really excited about it, and it, it seemed and even when I when I manipulated the the optical theremin, that all changed the sound, and so it was very. It's kind of I think it was a, a success, you know, at least from a, a beginning standpoint. Um, and it also opened my eyes to more about what lock-in amplifiers actually do. I thought of them as more of like a sound manipulation tool. Um, I didn't realize you could play two completely different things off of each other that were maybe the more similar they are, then sometimes the more interesting it will be. So, um, so you know, like I uh, want to try doing two drum machines at the same tempo and play them off of each other and see what that does. Um, and I thought that would be interesting, but I didn't really, I didn't think about it. I just looked at the inputs as like different options for sound manipulation, not so much as two separate inputs for two separate things. Which So that so that could really kind of open my, my eyes to that. Um, probably other people maybe that use this stuff probably realize that. Heimbach probably realizes that, but this is my first time understanding that uh, use. Here's an example of, uh, of what the one amplifier one output sounds like. So I also wanted to try. Uh, there's two outputs that I wanted, to, and I have two lock and amplifier, two Ithaca or Ithaco lock and amplifiers. So I wanted to try that. So I split the single out of the uh, optical theremin, and I put them. Then I set it up like this. But I made a mistake, and I put the other one reversed, and that's probably why this happened. You know, I, I didn't really get a, like the results as much uh, in my first go with the two lock-in amplifiers. I figure I have to play with that a little bit to kind of get that to sound cooler, uh, which I, I feel like confident that I can.
And so I wanted to do something at the end here that's going to be a little more musical. Um, so I just improvised a vocal over this. It's just nonsense. I took the, the vocal and I, I changed the pitch to a fifth, but like the lower fifth. And I just kind of played with those together and then did use some effects. And I had Heimbach on the brain, so I used, uh, I wanted to get something that lay a little bit of a foundation. Um, so because everything's so, this thing's so crazy. So I used a, a Gauss app that Heimbach uh, helped develop. And uh, I just used a synthesizer sound and some, uh, some piano. So I did some reverse and that sort of thing and it came out. together um so i hope you enjoyed that so i'm gonna I'll, I'll i'll end with that stay tuned for the um for more about these things because i think this is going to be a really interesting uh, series thanks